Welcome to another episode of the ABC GCI Coffee Break podcast, episode 106. My name is Allison Jackson, here with Mike Maloney. We have a presenting partner this month, the Haynes Group, and then our lightning round sponsor is New Horizon Finishes. Mike, tell us about our partners this month. Our friends over at the Haynes Group, they do offer a uh, full range of services from ground up construction, tenant improvements, rapid response and design build services. They're your go-to for all things construction. Uh, we are very appreciative uh, having them on board with us the next couple of weeks. And for the lightning round, our friends over at New Horizon Finishes. We had Michael Sloan on last week. He was a great guest. Uh, they pride themselves on providing the customers with the highest level of service, specializing in fast-track commercial products of all types, from retail, industrial, institutional, healthcare facilities, educational facilities, corporate office fit-out, biotech, pharmaceutical restaurants, high and residential. They can do it all. Uh, their recent work includes Starbucks, uh, retail front, things like that. So reach out to the folks over at New Horizon Finishes for all your uh, wall covering needs. And then uh, this week on the podcast, uh, weird and wacky news of things we like to talk about, outrage. This next story will fill you with unbelievable rage. You're going to get so mad right now. If you're Romans, driving, pull over. You're going to get car. so mad. You're going to want to know how to get in on this class action lawsuit as a Florida woman. Put the knives she's, down. You know, she's suing Reese's over, get this, faceless pumpkins. Her class action lawsuit uh, against the Hershey Company after she bought a uh, Reese's peanut butter pumpkin. And when she opened the package, there was no eyes and smiley face like a pumpkin. She was outraged uh, that it was falsely represented. It's peanut butter products. There was no eyes and no face. It was just a plain Pumpkin-shaped Reese's peanut butter cups. What do you think, Allison? Would you, how angry would you be if you... I mean, I would be livid. False oh. advertising is not a joke, Jim. We, do, we gotta get it. <laughs> we got <laughs> this reference. That's a good one. Um, we've got to get on this class action lawsuit because I demand, uh, you know, demand restitution, I guess. I this. actually felt the same way. I just thought I was being a little dramatic and I didn't say anything, but I now... I. I could have oh. made millions. Do you think oh. she's going to win it? Like, is this something that's. I wonder if um they'll change the packaging now, right? They'll probably change the packaging to say pumpkin shaped. You no. Know? Yeah. Or they'll just have to put like an asterisk to say like face not yeah. included. Does it, does it make or... it taste any better if it's got a face on it? Does it taste any different? It's still I got... think it would taste worse. It's probably as like more dye or like has to do some weird thing on the machine. It chocolate. takes the chocolate off. If you think about it, they'd probably have to stamp the eyes and the face and the stuff yeah. to take the chocolate off and you just see peanut butter on the inside. You want to take chocolate away from the Reese's peanut butter cup? You want to take the chocolate away from that beautiful, beautiful balance of peanut butter and chocolate? Don't do the, that. The fury. Don't the do rage, that. The rage. The rage that must be filling up inside people. But I would be outraged. Uh, I would be outraged. Uh, and, you know, that's a funny, wacky story. But as we've uh, coming out of a snowstorm this past weekend, uh, Allison's got some pretty good ideas about surviving the cold weather. What do you got, Allison, with some uh, First cold of all, tips? stay inside. I mean, ugh. it's we're recording today's Wednesday. Tuesday, there was a snowstorm all day. in Mass I say storm, but it, it snowed. Oh. And, and everyone was at work. And then we drove home and the roads were pretty fine and whatever. But. Um, I historically hate the winter. I didn't choose to live here. I was born here and here I still am and it's okay. Um, but I saw a TikTok and somebody was talking about some tips on how to like stay warm and like cozy and happy during the winter. I ordered some new slippers that are very comfy. They have memory foam and a, a like fur on them. Not real fur. So PETA can't come after me, but um, they're very comfy. And then wool socks, specifically Whoa. wool socks, very cozy. Keep the heat in. Do you and sleep then, with a heated? Do you have a sleep with a heated blanket? I don't. Um, but we have heated blankets for the living room. But um, I actually I got a really nice robe. Um, if you're gonna get a robe, guess a robe with a little bit of weight to it. Yeah. And then that, that's been keeping me nice and warm, again, with my socks. And then you have to get, like, cozy matching pajamas. I got these, like, very cozy matching PJ sets so that you can feel, like, happy and cozy all at once. 
just just kiss for those listening at home. You and George have matching pajamas. Mm-mm. All right. Well, I was going to say, <gasps> what, what, hold no, on no, no. one second. No, 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 no. All right. You said matching PJs. I'm thinking matching PJs like the shirt and the pants. All right. Man, no, that's a close call. I am my boyfriend and I are not walking around this house yeah. in matching pajamas. No that one's judging you if you are. I'm just we were just getting the story Although, straight here. My mom did have us all get Cape Shark shirts to take a big family picture with all the same Cape Shark shirts this Shout out Cape Shark. Winter, shout out to Cape Shark. Cape Shark. Cape Shark. Cousins who own Cape Shark for a well, those, those are some that. Some great tips. Sorry. So those are some great tips to stay in warm. Hopefully, you know, we only got a couple of weeks of winter here. The groundhog's gonna shoot a shadow a couple of weeks and be done with us. I hope so. Didn't the ooh, didn't the groundhog pass away? Oh, I don't know. I'm sure they'll have another one in the bed. There's always, you know, next next groundhog up, as they say. Well, they had like a kid. The last one, didn't they have a kid? There the they found the groundhog passed away. Look <gasps> this up really quick. Look this up. This is All important. Right. The listeners Let's need go. to know. Yeah. Look up like the they found the groundhog passed away. And so they had this kid who had a stuffed groundhog in the crowd. They just had they had him hold him up, up the stuffed thing. And they were like, oh, a shadow, more wind. And it made no sense. I'm going to try to. I've got nothing on there about uh, groundhog. Punxsutawney on. Phil. Let me see if we can see Punxsutawney. As long as Punxsutawney Punks... Phil's fine. But groundhog. Punxsutawney Phil. Phil dead hold on <laughs> yep okay canada's groundhog all okay. right man fred lamar Mott, canada's groundhog found dead hours before groundhog day prediction it was a somber groundhog day in canada as fred lamar Mott, the beloved groundhog who predicted weather was found dead hours before he could take part in his annual tradition this was february 2nd 2023 so last groundhog's day um but hold on because there was <laughs> Close this thing. Punks with Tony Phil is safe. Yeah. Okay, Punks good. Tony Phil is safe. Punks with Tony to... Phil has been marked safe yeah. on Facebook. Um, there will be a new groundhog in Canada for 2024. So for all of so, our Canadian listeners, we're sorry safe. for your loss, and we are excited to see um who the new groundhog is that will be telling your. Predictions for spring and winter weather. And if you've never seen the big spread they put on down at Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania, it's a big deal down there when the groundhog comes out. But uh, we're looking forward to Groundhog Day a couple of weeks. But for those ready to go here, we've got a great guest. We've got Amy Benoit on from uh, WT Kenny, longtime ABC Massachusetts members, listeners of the show. Uh, they're just getting ready to celebrate their 85th anniversary. WT Kenny, she's the director of business development. Uh, very passionate about sales. It took me a while to get her on the podcast. So we'll h- hear it from Amy. Welcome to the podcast, Amy Benoit, the Director of Business Development from WT Kenny. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you very much. Happy uh, this Friday. Is, yeah, this, happy Friday to you. This is uh, a long time coming. Appreciate taking the time. I know that we had to reschedule you and uh, I know you guys are super busy on that end. Congratulations on the 85th anniversary of WT Kenny. I know we want to talk about that, but why don't we introduce yourself? Tell us what you do for WT Kenny, and uh, we'll go from there. Sure. So, Amy Benoit with WT Kenny. We're a painting contractor uh, based in Arlington, Massachusetts, and I'm their director of business development. So, that means really just growing their pipeline of, of work and trying to close business for them. Pretty simple. And then I know we, you know, briefly discussed it before in some emails, but I know the one thing that you're very passionate about is the sales side of things. And we both said that that's not a very uh, easy thing to do. It, it is when you're passionate about it, which is your thing. Uh, tell us how you came to work for WT Kenny and why you're so passionate about the sales side of business. I mean, those two questions go together. It's all about relationships. And I happened to meet a bunch of the WT Kenny folks years ago and probably literally 10 years ago at a BOMA event. I think it was a BOMI, BOMA MAC conference. And, um, you know, I always thought highly of them just based on my experience, which was kind of brief, but then I would see them at events and just um, kept in touch from a distance for a long time. And then, um, yeah, the timing was right. They were looking to hire someone um, to do sales for them. And, you know, we started talking, you know, more uh, frequently. And it was just a no-brainer that, you know, they're just a great organization with really genuine, nice people. Yeah, I 
the folks at WTK have always done right by us here at the Gould Construction Institute and ABC Massachusetts. Uh, and I know that uh, being, you know, company for 85 years is a long time to be a, a company, especially doing what they've been doing over there. So congratulations to all of them over there. Now, as far as um, the sales side of things, why do you think you have excelled in that? What 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 are some skills that you bring that help you know folks over at WT Kenny? Having a thick skin, ah. <laughs> um, you know, not taking those personally and being persistent, but not annoying. You know, you learn what that balance is over time. Of course, you don't want to be the annoying person that just kind of gets written off because you're too salesy. So it's really focusing on the prospect as an individual first. Who, you know, who is this person? What makes them tick? Are they a parent? Um, are they a runner? Just finding those personal things out about them. And then, you know, really as a follow-up saying, and by the way, you know, we can paint whatever you like. Right. Do you have one particular story maybe in, in your career, maybe not at WT Kenny, but maybe in your career where maybe you had to convince someone? Any, do you have any good stories? I don't like to, you know, if I get the no or get the stiff arm, you know, I just kind of feel like you got to know when to walk away. So I'm not yep. going to be that pushy person, but I will definitely say there have been times where, you know, the client you've worked with uses someone else and it doesn't go great. And they come back and say, Hey, you know what? I, you guys are great. And, you know, um, kind of made a bit of a mistake trying to go in a different direction just because maybe one little thing was not perfect. Um, there's those memes out there, right? The site, you know, I, I, I got a guy that can do it cheaper. Right. And there's those like three things, right. Cheaper, faster, better. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, th that's, that's always the way, right. Someone can always do it cheaper, faster, but isn't necessarily better. I need it done today or tomorrow, but you know, it's not going to be the, the, the cheapest or best way to do it. Um, how about as far as some of the, um, the people over at WT Kenny uh, that you've worked with over there, who, who over there has helped you in your growth over there? Oh my gosh. I mean, really the people I work with, well, of course, you know, Brian Jurgens, our president, yep. um, I have so much respect for him. Um, I mean, he'll, there's no task um, that he won't, you know, do as a president. Um, he walks jobs with me and he'll still put, you know, the pen to the paper and, and, put you know numbers out there and I just find that so refreshing to work for a leader who um you know is involved at that level not because he's a micromanager but because he cares and he wants to support me and support our sales and, and operations. Um so definitely yeah Brian and then all the guys with the project managers. Um those are the ones I spend the most time with talking with walking jobs with walking you know scope doing scoping visits with and um, they're the ones who really, you know, link my efforts to closing with the client. Do you like to paint? That's another big question. No, no. I'm, I'll admit, I'm like an attention to detail kind of gal. I'm a big picture gal. So it's that level of patience. Yep. Just I'm with not, you. Not my wheelhouse. Yeah. We talked, we had another uh, podcast guest a, a while ago. Where we talked about painting and stuff. I just can't, the cutting in. And then painting it all, and it looks great. Oh, you gotta do a second coat, and then you go back, and you gotta cut it in again, and then you gotta put a second coat, and then you're like, oh no, nope, gotta do it again. I just I don't have a that and raking. So some, some jobs I just don't like to do is painting and raking. And most of the time, right, I'm from painting. I'm there's more paint on me or the or the floor or the ceiling than there is on the actual wall. So I'd rather not, yeah, get into that type of stuff. Yep. Um, did you grow up in Massachusetts? Are you a Massachusetts person? Yes, I am. All I right. grew up in Western Massachusetts. And very few people have ever heard of the town I grew up in. Uh oh, Long Meadow, North Adams, Lee, uh, my close, Mon oh, wow. sort of. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah it's an, it's God's country out in that neck of the world, right? It's That's definitely right. uh, yep, beautiful, very beautiful out there. Western Mass near North Adams, or Western Mass up by like Pittsfield. Um, close to the Vermont and New Hampshire border, so um. Yeah, it's not as far west as a couple of towns you just mentioned. That's very like north. So did you grow up a sports fan in New England? Yes, but I'm not a close follower. So all right. Go you, you never know. You know, you never know. Sometimes out in that part of the world, there could be a New York, you could be a New York fan somewhere. You never know. That's uh, true. But no, 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 
definitely yeah Boston fans. Now, as far as some of the sales, I know we talked about you being the director of business development out there. Uh, as far as the sales go, what would you recommend for people that want to get into that field? What should they do to get ready to 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 be a strong salesperson? I wish, I'm glad you asked this question. I wish that there was more training and more <laughs> guidance. I mean, why is it not really taught at the collegiate level? It's a great career. It's very, it's fun. It's challenging. So, um, so what can they do is practice being outgoing, even if it's not in your nature. I don't think it was in mine. I think I was a you know, pretty kind of reserved person. And you just learn that you have to kind of almost put on a different, you know, mentality when you walk into a room and shake hands and fake it till you make it. And so, I was going to say that, right? A lot of people say that fake it till you make it. But, you know, I think that when people say they're normally very reserved, if you get them in the group of people, again, your passion comes out and you're less yeah. reserved, mm -hmm. you know, and you're more likely to talk to people, shake people's hands. Um, how important is the handshake, do you think? Well, it's definitely important, but don't go overboard. It's not an arm <laughs> wrestling contest. <laughs> uh, my son is on a co-op with Wentworth right now, and um, it's like his first kind of like real corporate job doing what he's been doing in school. And the people that he works with, I've been pushing him since he was a little boy to a good firm handshake, right? Not mm -hmm. not too overpowering, not arm wrestling, but a good firm handshake. And they've already mentioned to him a few times that he they liked his handshake because it was, you know, uh, but that's, you know, you meet a lot of people and you shake hands and they like floppy fish. They like wet floppy fish. And I don't like that either. No. I like that. I like that going for the good handshake. Sometimes I think sometimes you go in, you get that half a handshake and it's soft. Let me do that again. I got to get a, get a better <laughs> handshake. That. Because, you know, people remember that. If you, get, you went floppy handshake. Oh, I like <laughs> agree. Um, have you developed over at WT Candy's type of a training program for the sales? I know you don't have a very large you know department over there, but have you ever thought about putting something together? So really, actually, lately, we have invested a lot of time and energy into putting new systems in place. So we have a new CRM. So, you know, we're migrating data and we're you know trying to change our internal behaviors of how we use technology and you know what we're using. And it's all moving in a really, really positive direction. So this new CRM is giving us, you know, data and reports and things that just were not as easily accessed before. So but that's huge. And I wonder if maybe the, maybe it's not ta taught at the college level because I think everybody that you talk to does it a different way, maybe, right? Whereas you know your your tactic and your the way that you sell might be different than another company does it. Do you have any anybody that you look up to in the sales side? It's maybe not WT Kenny, but maybe you know sales people out there. You know, I'm thinking of like Jordan Belfort from you know the Wolf of Wall Street <laughs> guy, or like a Gary Vaynerchuk, or like a. Anybody along those lines that you look up to or maybe that you've learned things from? That's a tough one. Tough one. I um, probably more think about someone I just know locally who I see yeah, has become successful on Who's the that? sales side. Um, you have to put me on the spot. <laughs> That's what we do here. We, Gosh. We, got, we went down the rabbit hole. Now we're going on. I mean, myself, I, you know, if you've seen uh, Gary Vaynerchuk at all, he's a, if you think about where he came from and his background and, you know, he came here as an immigrant with his family and his family owned a liquor store and he took that liquor store business, you know, mm -hmm. mom and pop business to like selling wine out of the basement and growing the business from like two or three million to nine or 10 million. And I was like a $60 million a year, yeah. uh, you know, person. So, um, yeah, locally, do you have anybody that maybe you that you look up to in the sales side of yeah, things? Yeah, no, I definitely do. So um, there's a gentleman by the name of Noel Macario, and um, he's probably embarrassed that I even just said his name because he is one of those people who is very successful, but is very um, humble and kind of likes to be in the background. And I just see the way he treats his clients and the way, you know, he operates. And, you know, he's always um, been a just a great contact in the industry and someone who well, you know, always give me the time of day and just, you know, kind of trade information. And um, it's less that he's saying, oh, this is how you should do it. But, you know, by watching someone like him, you know, yeah. do what they do and very successfully, you, you pick up, you know, those tricks of the trade. But really, it just comes down to being a genuine human. That, that, I think I think being a successful salesperson, I think 
if you're just a good person in general, your clients see that, sense that, read that on your body language, feel that when you're, you know, talking to them in a, in a, in a meeting. Uh, as far as some, what are the types of companies that WTK is looking to, to work with or work for, uh, I guess, as a sub, you know, is there, are there particular projects that you guys are looking to, to, to work with or particular contractors? Um, not necessarily particular contractors, but my mind goes more to sectors where we are successful and we would just kind of love to expand that business. Um, a couple of sectors I've kind of rededicated myself to our uh, healthcare. Um, you know, it's not for everyone. And I think we do a great job in that space. We're familiar with it. Um, parking sounds kind of silly. But, you know, a lot of parking structures are in dire need of remediation from rust. Um, so, you know, that's kind of one that I think, you know, we could chase more deliberately. And, um, you know, hotels uh, right now, I mean, multifamilies, you know, on the upswing. So, um, but end of the day, we'll paint anything, you know, in any sector of real estate. So I guess I, I wouldn't even have thought of the parking garage thing from the, from the, like you said, the rust side are just being remediated, right? Where, you know, they are exposed to the elements pretty yep. much. And whether it be, you know, um, you know, like you said, just the rust. I didn't I wasn't even thinking of that. But um, so if you're in the if you're in the parking lot business and you need to reach out to Amy, she's she wants to speak to you. Um <laughs> uh, how about a dream project? Any sort of dream project that you've always wanted to to work on, you know, some that you've always loved to a project that you would love to do. I mean, just more personally what I love and it's not necessarily something that you know W.T. Kenny would love <laughs> but I mean these just beautiful old historical ornate buildings that I see even just like driving to the office in Arlington I mean there's just some you know beautiful like hundred year old properties really more on the residential side that just have you know seven different colors of paint and it's um just intricately done I think those are really beautiful it's not so, I, don't, I think it'll be a headache for the team, but <laughs> I personally appreciate them. <laughs> and I, I, I agree with you. I think some of those buildings, especially in that part of, you know, the Arlington area are very beautiful. And, you know, I think, uh, I think you're, we, you got to find them all those people and tell, get WTK to paint that place for you. That's right. Um, how about as far as what are some goals you've set, you know, for yourself or WT Kenny and the, you know, it's just after the first of the year, what are some, whether it be personal goals or, professional goals what do you what are you thinking yeah I think you know every year you want to do better than the, the last one my tenure here at W. Kenny has involved maternity leave so I have yet to have a full year here I have two partial years so 2024 is my first full calendar year at W. Kenny so I'm very excited to you know have that um, you know the 12 months to chase business, develop relationships and, you know, stoke the ones that already exist. It's about layering client upon client, you know, ideally you get a first time job and that person calls you for the next 30 years. So That's my goal is layering those repeat clients. Love it. Top of each other, yeah. If I, anybody want to get a hold of you, how would they go about what's the best way to get a hold of you? Uh, email. So uh, it's a Benoit, a B E N O I T at W-T Kenny. Uh, it's W-T-K-E-N-N-E-Y dot com. All right. So if anybody, so we're looking for, she said at W-T Kenny will paint anything. That's um, right. So reach out to Amy over at W-T Kenny. She can get you connected and get you, um, get your job done here. So now we're going to jump into uh, my personal favorite part of the podcast is the lightning round. This is where we insert some lightning sound effects and some lightning bolts. Last of 10 rapid fire questions here. We'll see what, how you do here. But uh, first question is going to be, you have to sing karaoke. What song do you pick? Ooh, uh, salt and pepper. Something. Oh, jeez. All right. Um, have you ever been told you look like someone famous and who was it? Oh, I once got Cindy Crawford. I didn't mind that. Oh, I see that a little bit. Yeah, I see that. Yep. Yeah. Um, what would your talent be if you were Miss or Mr. World? Ooh, trombone. Um, <laughs> if you had to I was delete a all, uh, well, you, you were, I was you a band geek. Yeah. Oh, all right. Is that what you, did you play? But we That's won't ask the question. You, you played the trombone. You yeah, still play yes, it today? I no, still, I do not. Oh, I was gonna say, I was gonna pick that up and start <laughs> playing some music first. Uh, if you had to delete all but three apps from your smartphone, which ones would you keep? 
Ooh, um, Facebook. I'm kind of old, I guess, in that way. Um, then I would keep uh, my Fitbit app. Just recently got into it. And I would keep, of course, my photos, my children. Oh, nice. Um, what is one fictional family you would like to be a member of? Like a fictional family, like a make-believe or a... Oh, Shit's Creek. You know, I tried getting to Shit's Creek. Was wasn't my thing, but it's funny. That's some that's funny. You're missing out. You're missing out. Yeah. Try again. Um if you could have oh, what was the worst job you ever had? That's a good one. Worst job you ever had? Ooh, camp counselor. Really? Yeah. Didn't like the camp counselor. My both of my boys are camp counselors, and they my my middle boy loves it. My middle guy loves it. Oh, um nice. favorite breakfast food? Uh ooh, big stack of pancakes. Oh, yeah. I love that, too. Uh, have you ever completed anything on your bucket list? Oh, yeah, I have. Um, I've jumped out of the plane. I've Ooh. rappelled off the Hyatt in downtown Boston. I've done, yeah, uh, bungee jumping. No, I don't see. I don't I don't I don't think I could do the bungee jumping piece. I think I could do the parachute piece. I don't see that's odd to me. But yeah, my 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 one of my kids wants to do parachuting. My wife is won't let him do it because she's like something bad's gonna happen and she said you know don't come home i did it with my mom oh see <laughs> maybe we can get my wife to do it i don't know i don't know if we'll show there you go. um let's see here um weirdest food you've ever eaten weirdest weirdest food yep hmm. i mean i grew up eating a lot of and anim like animals we would hunt so deer liver oh all right um are you a good dancer yes uh, what fruit or vegetable would you most want to be? Hmm. Pineapple. You could go to Mars, would you? Or why or why not? Oh, heck yeah. Yes. It's on the bucket uh, list now. I'm not going to ask you plenty of instruments because we already found that out. And then are you a coffee or tea person? And how do you, are you a coffee or tea person? Coffee. And how do you like your coffee? And then, because it's a coffee break podcast, we ask that question. Then, where do you get your coffee from? Oh, where do we get it from? I wish we had a great local place here. We don't. So, I make it every day at my house. Oh, brewer home. All right. That's great to know. All right. How do you like your coffee? Are you lots of cream and sugar, black, fat free creamer, and stevia. All right. All right. That's our friend, Amy Benoit, over at WKT County, Director of Business Development. So glad you came on. This is fantastic. If you need any painting, anything painted, anything whatsoever, all the folks at WGK, they will be out to paint it. Thanks, Amy. Appreciate you coming on. Thank you so much. I'd like to thank Amy Benoit from WTK for coming on the podcast and speaking with me. She was a great guest. Um, she is very passionate about what she does. And I feel uh that the you know the folks over at WT Kenny, I'm sure appreciate having her on board. So uh, again, 85th anniversary. Congratulations to everyone at WT Kenny. They're a long standing ABC Massachusetts member. And we appreciate them. Uh, what do we have for upcoming events? So, looking forward into February, we have a pipe fitter prep for exam class coming up February 3rd and 10th at the ABC GCI Woburn office. Then, we have a construction supervisor license prep for exam class on February 6th, 13th, 20th, and 27th. You do have to attend all four sessions. Um, so, if you are planning to get your CSL license, definitely get into that class. If you have questions about that, definitely reach out to any of us at the office. Um, then we have an OSHA 10 hour on February 12th and 14th from 8 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. both days at the ABC GCI Woburn office. And then finally, February 21st, we're going to have an in-person hot work safety certificate program class. So if you need your hot work certificate, um, if you need to update it, definitely get in on that class. And then also, if you aren't able to attend that date, we always have our hot work safety certificate program class online. If you have questions about that, you can reach out directly to me. I'm the one that manages that. You can check out all of these classes and the rest of the trainings that we have on the calendar through May 2024 at gwgci.org forward slash events. Awesome. Lots of great stuff going on over at the Gould Construction Institute. And now it's time for the news, which is brought to you by uh, our elite partners over here at UBC Massachusetts Energy Electrical Contractors, Metro Walls, and Veterans Development Corporation. 
ABC Feature News of the Week is uh, a letter from the new chairman of the ABC Masters Board, uh, Joe Camillo. Uh, he talks about free and open competition. And you can read more about it on the blog that was sent out to you uh, yesterday, or sorry, Monday, Tuesday. Uh, we also in the news is Greg Beeman, the president of ABC Massachusetts, uh, argues for racial reform in the Boston Globe letter. He talks about Massachusetts needs to update restrictive apprenticeship laws. See here, what else is in the news? We've got lots of events coming up here. Two of the most current ones coming up as a lunch and learn, connecting safety and well-being for the construction industry, taking place Tuesday, January 30th from 12 to 1. And a uh, in-person event called What Keeps You Up at Night, a seminar for business owners, Thursday, February 15th at 7:30 to 9 in the morning. Uh, all all the ABC Massachusetts members should have received a save the date postcard in the mail. Uh, we've got April 4th coming up, meet the generals at Granite Links and Quincy. Uh, June 6th will be the GCI student graduation. And then June 20th will be the ABC Mass Annual Golf Outing at Pine Hills over in Plymouth. Uh, talk about some building mass careers news. You can host a table or meet qualified candidates at a Skill USA sale conference at Gillette Stadium, taking place Thursday, February 8th over at the Putnam Club at Gillette Stadium. Uh, you have a chance to interact with motivated and talented high school seniors, Showcase products, services, through engagement demonstrations, network with educators, industry professionals, and other exhibitors, as well as contribute to the educational and professional development of young minds. Any questions about the BMC program, you can reach out to Steve Sullivan at steve at abcma.org. Let's see here. We'll talk about some member updates. We'd like to welcome uh, Nelson Group Construction Corporation out of Medford. They're a general contractor. Mm -hmm and Fleet Refrigeration and Air Conditioning out of Woburn. It's great to have you as part of the chapter. Welcome aboard. Uh, we talked about the 85th anniversary of W.T. Kenny with a fresh new look. Love the new logo. Uh, and uh, Griffin Electric supports local communities during the holiday season. So congratulations to Wayne Griffin. And then uh, Erland has uh, completes enabling work and infrastructure upgrades over at the Vale here in Stoneham. So congratulations to Erland. And as always, if you want to be on the podcast, reach out to me, Mike, at gwgci.org. We'd love to have you. Got some great guests lined up. Uh, next couple of weeks, we're booking it all the way into May now. So it's just exciting times. Uh, and as always, like, tag, share, and follow. Tell your friends. Follow us on Instagram, LinkedIn. Uh, leave a comment. Pay attention because we've got lots of cool stuff going on. And that'll do it. Talk to you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>